Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week, we are going to be discussing Henry VIII and his six wives. He was one of England's most famous kings, partially because of his marital exploits, but also because he was the monarch that founded the Church of England. Oftentimes, his wives are overshadowed by this larger-than-life figure, so we are going to use surviving portraits to help showcase these six remarkable women. Before we look at his wives, we need to examine Henry VIII as a man and a king. He ascended the throne in 1509 at the age of 18. His father, Henry VII, was the first king in the Tudor dynasty, having won the throne on the battlefield. Henry VIII inherited a fairly stable country and a vast treasury. This led to the creation of a vibrant court that was the envy of Europe. However, his quest for a son and heir to further his dynasty overtook nearly every aspect of his life. Catherine of Aragon was the first wife of Henry VIII. They were married from 1509 to 1533. She was the daughter of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. It was quite the match for the fledgling Tudor dynasty. However, Catherine was actually first married to Henry's older brother, Arthur, but he died about six months after their wedding. After being kept in limbo for eight years, Catherine finally became queen. Unfortunately, Catherine and Henry only had one child that survived infancy, the future Mary I. Henry could not have this. He needed a son to carry on the Tudor name. Catherine was six years older than he was, and in the late 1520s, it was clear that she could no longer bear children. This portrait of Catherine is an 18th century copy of a lost original. It was painted when she was around 40 years old. We can tell that she is a queen. Her clothes are beautifully made, and she wears numerous jewels. Catherine wears a gabled headdress, which at this point was on its way out of fashion. But she was known to be a traditionalist, so this is not a surprising detail. Finally, we can see that she had a fuller figure. Catherine was pregnant at least six times according to her historical records. It took a toll on her body and mind, especially since only one daughter survived to adulthood. While Henry was still married to Catherine of Aragon, he fell in love with Anne Boleyn. However, Anne had seen him grow tired of his mistresses after a short dalliance and knew that she did not want this for herself. In fact, her sister Mary had been one of Henry's mistresses. So, Anne told Henry that the only way they could be together was as husband and wife. Henry petitioned the Pope for a divorce. When it was denied, Henry decided to break away, form his own church, and grant himself a divorce. Henry and Anne married in 1533, but just three years later, he would have her executed on false charges of adultery when she couldn't provide him with the longed-for son and heir. The couple did have one living daughter, the future Elizabeth I. The portrait of Anne is an Elizabethan copy of a lost work. Most images of Anne were destroyed after her execution, so this is the best guess that historians have about what she looked like. Notice that there is a focus on her dark hair and eyes. These, according to contemporary records, were her most alluring features. She's wearing a French hood, which was the height of fashion in the Tudor court. It also speaks to her upbringing in the French royal household. The bee pearl necklace around her neck has become a symbol for her in the modern era. Less than two weeks after Anne Boleyn's execution, Henry VIII married Jane Seymour. She was the opposite of the former queen, quiet and demure. Henry was smitten, and became even more so, when Jane delivered a healthy baby boy named Edward. Sadly, she passed away two weeks later from complications. Henry was absolutely devastated. Jane Seymour was immortalized in this portrait by Tudor court painter Hans Holbein. Unlike the previous portrait, she is portrayed as a queen with her dress and jewels. Her headdress is the more modest gable style. This was to set her apart from Anne. Jane wasn't queen for very long, only about a year and a half. But, because she gave Henry a son, he wanted to immortalize her with his regal portrait. It took three years for Henry to overcome his grief, but he knew it was safer to have a spare heir, so he commissioned Holbein to go to various European courts to paint portraits of eligible women. The goal was to make an alliance with another Protestant country, in order to bolster the strength of the new Church of England. Anne of Cleves, sister to the Duke, was chosen. However, once she got to her new home, Henry did not like her. After only six months of marriage, they were divorced. But Anne was given the title of the king's sister and several properties. She became one of the wealthiest independent women in England. Unlike the previous portraits, Anne is making direct eye contact with the viewer. This is because Holbein wanted her to connect with Henry, since this was his only way of viewing a foreign bride. Her German-style dress is clearly well-made, but the fashion was seen as bizarre and outdated in the English court. Anne's hands are folded. This was to symbolize her piety and submission, 
two things that were important to Henry in a bride. In an interesting twist of fate, Henry VIII fell in love with Anne Boleyn's first cousin, a young girl named Catherine Howard. She was outgoing and vivacious, with an attitude that made Henry feel young again. They were married shortly after he divorced Anne of Cleves. At first, things were going well, but Catherine was only about 19 when Henry was a full 30 years older. She soon fell in love with a man her own age, Thomas Culpepper. Their secret was discovered, and they were executed in 1542. This portrait is one of only a handful that survived Henry's rage at being made a fool of. It was painted by Hans Holbein. Here, we see Catherine as a queen. She is wearing the same jewels seen in the portrait of Jane Seymour. This indicates that they were part of the royal collection. Her hair is in a French hood, but is scandally pushed back, showing quite a lot of it. It is a portrait of a beautiful young girl, suddenly thrust into queenship. By 1543, Henry was in need of a nurse, not a wife. But he had a big ego and wanted to show his prowess by entering into another marriage. Catherine Parr was the perfect fit. She had already been married twice, to men much older than her. She was also more mature than his previous wife, and she got along with his children. They were married until Henry's death in 1547. In this portrait, we see a lot of her personality. She is dynamic, almost moving forward out of the frame. Her clothes are quite fashionable and modern. This fits well with Catherine's personality. She was the first woman in England to publish a book under her own name, and she was one of the leading Protestants in the country. Her ideas greatly influenced two of her stepchildren, Edward VI and Elizabeth I, in their policies during their reign. Henry VIII was a larger-than-life figure, and that often causes his six wives to be overshadowed. However, they were all remarkable women in their own right. By using portraiture, we can at least catch a glimpse into their world and understand who they were. <laughs>